Hi, my name is Rebecca Miles. I'm a Senior Global Trade Content Analyst at Integration Point. In this role, I work on export-related content, including sanctions. There's been a lot of talk in the U.S. news lately about new sanctions against Russia. This is part of the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, which President Trump signed into law on Wednesday, August 2nd. Aside from Russia, the new law also includes sanctions affecting Iran and North Korea. The Iran-related sanctions target that country's ballistic missile and weapons of mass destruction programs, plus human rights violators. Specific sanctions were levied against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and its affiliates. The North Korea-related sanctions are mostly secondary, but they are designed to interfere with the North Korean financial and shipping sectors. They target financial institutions maintaining correspondent accounts with North Korean financial institutions not approved by the United Nations, and they allow for the seizure of vessels, aircraft, and other conveyance used for unauthorized transactions with North Korea. The Russia portion of the Sanctions Act has proven the most controversial, and therefore also the most newsworthy. The controversy lies in the limitations placed on the power of the U.S. President to lift or impose sanctions. While the President has authorization to waive certain sanctions dealing with cybersecurity and the crisis in Ukraine, any other changes proposed to U.S. sanctions against Russia must undergo congressional review. The sanctions themselves target entities circumventing U.S. cybersecurity to benefit the Russian government those who invest heavily in Russian export pipelines, and those who work closely with Russian defense and intelligence agencies. The restrictions on Russian energy exports are expected to disrupt numerous European energy projects and have raised concerns across Europe. In summary, many of the sanctions imposed by this act apply to targeted entities, which have not yet been named. Companies should keep a close eye on developing changes within the next several months to ensure they don't conduct business with newly sanctioned entities. As always, Integration Point's Global Trade Content Team will continue monitoring an array of U.S. denied persons lists to ensure the sanctioned entities appear in our system as they become available, providing our clients with the tools they need to stay compliant. Thank you for listening.